Hey everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are going to be talking all about cool season crops. I am super excited to get started, even though it is really cold and snowy outside and absolutely freezing. We haven't had a day above freezing in a very long time. Uh-oh, we're echoing. Uh-oh, one moment. Technical difficulties. <laughs> okay, there. Hopefully, hopefully yeah, it. hopefully that fixes our... Uh, Can you hear us? Can everybody hear us okay? Yeah, let us know in the chat, chat if uh, we have any. <laughs> so hopefully you can hear us. Hello, <laughs> welcome. Um, well, first of all, I'm Carrie. Um, I always forget to say that, but I'm Carrie. This is Gail. Um, we are the creators of the From Seed to Spoon app. And uh, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the app and what it does. Okay. Yeah, because we're going to be giving away a free one-year premium app subscription, too. Super exciting. So we'll show you a little bit about what uh, what you guys would get. So this is the Seed to Spoon app. We built this um, after learning to grow food back about 10 years ago now, almost. Yeah. So we uh, transformed our backyard into, uh, I mean, we basically got obsessed with gardening. And mm -hmm. let me pull up the picture here and show you. Yeah, we lived in a standard urban setting. I mean, we lived in the city neighborhood, HOA, all of that. Um, yeah, yeah, so this was our house when we first started. And then uh, this was a couple. We're having Try again. There we go. This was our <laughs> house a couple years later. So we built our app um, because, especially back then, there really wasn't an app that made people knowing things like when you should plant different things, companion planting, pests. Um, there was no, like, there were no apps to let you log or track your garden or anything like that. And I was using, like, Excel spreadsheets, and we wanted to make an app to make it easier. So Yeah, I will say, I, the, one of the hardest things whenever we first started out was always trying to remember when the first frost date was, the last frost date, and then trying to calculate out. Like, what is six weeks before that date? And then I do it's yeah it saves me so time. it's crazy so this is our app here you can find it in the app store by searching for from seed to spoon there's also a qr code up in the top left that you can scan with your phone and download and it shows you everything that you can plant now in your area and you can tap on it and um go in and see exact dates that are calculated based on your nearest growing season. um it also shows you the different varieties that uh, we recommend, and also the ones that we carry in our store, the companions for each plant, and also the plants that don't work well with that. Um, there's all of the, the growing information you're going to need right here, and uh, everything you're going to need to know, as well as the health benefits. It shows the health benefits of every plant. We have tons of videos and about every day into this app as well, as well as events like you're seeing today. Everything that he should do too is free. Everybody has free access to that. Um, iOS and Android. Yeah. So we're going to be uh, talking about different crops that we like to grow. And we're going to be showing some of them as we go along. So let me share my screen again, but share the different one here. Uh, this is the Park Seed. So we're going to be talking about all the different types of things we like to grow. We're really excited because it's finally time to start earning again. We are in Oklahoma and seven, and uh, it's just about time to start things like broccoli and cauliflower. We're going to do some other things a little early too: spinach and uh, lettuce. We have some little greenhouses that we grow for all the reasons that we sure by degree makes it to where we have like two to four weeks of extra growing season on either side. So we're going to be doing all that too, but today we're yeah, going to be we're talking going to show about... You, show you tips on um, keeping your plants warm in your area and all of that. So if you have questions, um, yeah, I see a question here. Um, one second. So the question is about being able to in the app. 
Um, so the frost dates are calculated based off of the probability of the latest frost, and we're using pretty conservative values there. Um, we get a range of dates that it typically is over the past hundred years. It's all been calculated from that, um, and we go with conservative ones. But if you want to change that, you can, can go into app? settings. Yeah, show the app. Show yeah. There's somebody also that I see asked about Canadians. And so if you're in Canada, you can type in your own frost dates too. So you can come in here and go to settings and then uh, location and planting date calculation up here. And then you can do set custom frost dates. And this lets you change it right here to be whatever the frost date um, you want to go with there. So a lot of times, like in, this is like a simulator version, but on the app on my phone, I've changed it for, for me to be like three weeks earlier. Um, because we have all these greenhouses that make it where we can grow earlier in the season. So you can customize it. And um, our sound is cutting out. Uh oh. Well, oh, I can switch away from this. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. Give us one second. We're going to switch our audio. Okay, try that. Is that better? Can y'all hear us better now? Hopefully, our sound. Let me unplug this. Yeah, unplug. Did you mute? Did you click mute there? Okay. Are we back I, on? I did not click mute. I don't know what's going on today. Wow. Okay. <sighs> My goodness. It's uh, maybe it's just the cold, <laughs> you know? Everything's just frozen. That's what's going on. We are out in the garage and there, it's like an insulated garage, but it is cold. So, so anyway, sounds back on. Awesome. Uh, yes, all these features are available in the regular version of the app, Nadine. Um, you can change your frost dates and do all of that. That is all in the free version. The paid version, most of those features revolve around logging plants in your garden um, because that takes up storage space when you add plants and all that. Like that's something we have to pay for. So that's why that's why those features are paid. But things like this that are like all the features that revolve around giving you the information you need to grow are free. Um, so so yeah, great questions. <laughs> okay, so let's start talking about some of our favorite things that we like to grow in the spring, because the spring is our favorite time to grow. Um, so I have my handy dandy <laughs> binder here. See, they made my cover for it. I thought it was cute. I had to show it. They worked very hard on writing out this. So now I know exactly which binder is for cool season. This is the most organized we've yeah. ever been with seeds. Before we've always just had kind of a big tote that had different like Bags, it was chaos. Yes. So, so I'm excited. Us. Yeah, we have everything all organized in here. So we're gonna woo. It's awesome. I love it. The kids helped do all this as well. So. I used to collect football cards as a kid, so this brought back a lot of nostalgia <laughs> going through and doing that and just getting them all organized and it was it was fun. So let's talk about our favorites. And we could go alphabetical, but I think we should jump in and talk about our favorites first. Yeah. And the ones we're gonna be starting indoors first. Yep. Um Broccoli. broccoli. Jump right into broccoli. We're going to jump right into broccoli. <laughs> we're going to get the excitement over with. I'm sorry if um, we're supposed to save the best for last, but we're going to jump right in. We always get really broccoli. excited for broccolis. And we also, so a few weeks ago, we went through and literally ordered every single variety of broccoli that we could find. <laughs> so I am really excited. Every to broccoli that's in our app is in this binder sample. right now and is yep. about to be in our garden. See, we have... Lots of varieties of broccoli. This page is all broccoli. If you're wondering it's why awesome. I'm building so many greenhouses, this is the reason. <laughs> because <laughs> we have a lot of broccoli. We are going to be growing a lot of everything else. So We have to sample out each one and know which does best and which yeah. one we like the best. And I, So if you haven't grown broccoli or if you think about broccoli just as kind of that big tree-looking thing you see in the grocery store, that's not the way we see it. So let me kind of explain the way we grow broccoli and the way we see it. We mainly grow varieties of broccoli that are like hybrid or sprouting varieties that produce a ton of little offshoots. Um, let me share my screen and we'll this one. 
so <laughs> Astro favorite. Brock is our favorite right here. So it makes a whole bunch of these. <laughs> Rockaholics. I like it. We are Rockaholics. We so it makes a lot of these little side shoots and they taste incredible. And we use them. I mean, I love making stir fry. I have a big like Blackstone griddle that I use every single day for making stuff. And I love making stir fries. And this is my favorite thing to use in that. Are these little side shoots of broccoli with a little bit of butter and you saute it. It is just incredible. You can throw cheese the on it. Leaves, Our kids even love it. The leaves are amazing too. Um, even on broccoli. We love stir frying those leaves and it tastes incredible. I, I absolutely love it. We accidentally discovered that one year because we were growing all of like the regular head varieties of broccoli and we had a huge hailstorm come in. And so we weren't able to protect them or anything. So a lot of them got beaten up and we're like, oh no, what are we going to do with it? So we finally found that you could actually eat the leaves and everything. We were so excited. So there's a, quite a few of other broccoli varieties that we have as well. The Artwork Hybrid is another great one. Let me pull this one up. I don't know if y'all can y'all see that well. Um, great question so, for Michelle. Yeah, I brought this question up because I... It, related to the one that we're actually talking about here now. So she was asking, do you need to cut the center first stock of broccoli or does it just grow like that? So, well, with the Aspa Brock variety, it just grows with the side shoots like that. Um, but for different hybrids, like the ones we're talking about now, so this artwork variety, it's great because it has the center head of broccoli that it grows first and then you cut that off and then it will continue to grow all the side shoots of broccoli. So it's like a hybrid of both. So it works great. Yeah. I love those ones too. There's some pretty cool broccoli varieties too. Like we're a sucker for any purple plant. So we love the purple sprouting broccoli. Um, and then also this Romanesca broccoli looks really cool. Yes, it's so pretty. I love it. Yeah, it's <laughs> a pretty awesome looking broccoli too. Yeah, and then that purple sprouting one I'm really excited about. We haven't ever grown that one. That's a new one that they just started carrying this year. So I'm really excited to have a purple broccoli. Hmm. Really excited. So let's talk about how to grow broccoli a little bit. And again, all this information is going to be in the app. So if you want to dive deeper and, and learn more about growing broccoli, check out the app. Um, but growing broccoli in some, like in Oklahoma, for example, started indoors around this time because it has a pretty long growing now the asper brock is faster it's like, i think 60 days so it's not it's not as urgent but if you're going to grow like a head variety of broccoli you need to be starting it indoors four to six weeks before the last spring frost or the, yeah, before the last spring frost um and it's one of the things that most people typically either start indoors or buy is training so that's what we're actually starting today after we make we do this live stream. We're going to be working on uh, starting every single broccoli. Yeah. So, um, and we're going to have those posted this video to our YouTube channel. We're going to yeah. go through and geek out over every variety and talk about what it is and why we're growing. We'll keep you updated. Yeah. Um, a biodome makes starting in uh, makes starting broccoli a lot easier. So, if you've never started your own seeds, I suggest checking out one of these. It comes with this lid that is super sturdy. I mean, this lid. Tell by that, but it's super sturdy. It's not like the ones you're used to that break. Um, they come with these little foam blocks, sponges, sponge, yeah, not foam. yeah, it's like bio a, sponges, bio sponge. Thank yeah. you. Sorry, um, <laughs> but it makes it to where it's easy to work with. You're not having to make your own, like make your own soil mix, or and it already has a hole right in the middle of it. Like you literally just put them, put them into a the block, and then I get, I get it wet, and then you have just the one hole. You just drop a seed. I only just drop one in each one, and I get nearly 100% germination rate success. It's amazing. So especially with uh, like pesky different types of things that are hard to grow, and especially like we have some rosemary that's up here behind us right now that we propagate. Great for that too. So anything that's kind of pesky or hard, um, it's great. It makes a that. really good environment. Yeah. And we had a live stream that we did a week ago that was all about indoor seed starting. So check that out, and you can learn how to start your own seeds indoors. Um, but once you uh, once once the time is right to plant broccoli, it's pretty simple. You get it out in the ground, put the culture around it. The biggest issue you're going to have is probably caterpillars, probably little green caterpillars that are all over it. 
couple approaches you can take for that. Um, in our garden, we have these greenhouse covers that go over all of our beds, and we eventually switch it out to insect bedding once it gets warmer, once it's too hot for the greenhouse covers. So that's a great option, and we'll completely eliminate the caterpillars because the moths can't get to them. Um, but there's also some spray that you can buy that is completely organic, called BTK, that you can spray on your plants, and whenever the caterpillars eat, their, eat it, they die. It's a natural soil bacteria that kills um, kills caterpillars. So those are two different options. Those are going to be the biggest issues you're going to have with pests with broccoli. Yeah, show the app, show them where the pests, where they can find yeah, all of their stuff. Yeah, because we, we have a pest section actually in the app that tells all the organic ways you can go about handling any of these pests, if you do happen to have any of them. So there's a pest section that is right here that has all the pests. And then there's also, if you just go to broccoli... section right here that shows you the most common pests. And then if you tap on one of them, then it gives you all the information right here. And here's the BT spray that I was talking about. Here's some tunnels too. Um, and different insect nettings and things like that. Or, because uh, there's two, they're either going to be cabbage loopers or cabbage worms. It's a treatment, same treatment for both, but they're going to be little green caterpillars and probably little white moss that are flying around your garden. You're going to think, oh, those are pretty. And then, oh no, look what they're doing. <laughs> At least that was a reaction Carrie had. She was very excited at first when we first started gardening. We had all these white butterflies there. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but eventually you were my nemesis. Then you went to war. Yes. Yeah. They're ruining all the broccoli. We love broccoli, like we talked about. <laughs> we love broccoli. Okay. So I think we've covered everything on broccoli. Do y'all have any questions? Um, great question from Lindsay here. So why choose part C? Um, number one, can help support us in our app and what we're doing here and, and help us support our mission of helping people grow food. Um, but I think a better reason I think is you're going to have more success with growing if you go with seeds that are high quality. So before we joined the Park Seed, we tried seeds from everywhere and we really weren't, we didn't really care where the seeds came from. If I saw a good deal, I bought it. I bought things in bulk. But we had a lot of issues with things not germinating. And because of that, we just started a whole bunch of extra seeds. Yeah, yeah. I would always plant at least like three or four seeds in one area because I never knew if it was going to come up or not. Yeah, no. and, then and then that translated to sometimes in the plants that didn't do very well. So yeah. we noticed a huge difference the first year that we joined Park Seed. I was really surprised. <laughs> first was germination rate. So yeah. it was a combination of the biodome and the, and the seed quality. Um, and you got to think about why that is. So a lot of these seeds that like I was buying before were things that were from some sort of store that had been sitting there on the shelf for a long time that were in not favorable conditions for pre preserving seeds. Well, we've been out to Park Seed. I've been in the warehouses they have that are cooled down constantly every day of the year so that the seeds are in the optimal environment and they're living in that until they go to ship out to you. So that's one of the reasons... Why are you going to have a higher in, quality? In uh, South Carolina. We went out there and walked through. It was really cool. And there's also someone, uh, shout out to Annette out in South Carolina, who like goes through and tests all these seeds. This is her job, is testing seeds constantly. Mm -hmm. And they're catered around like, what seeds need to be at in order for you to sell them and go above and beyond. So, um, you know, I think that's the reason. And also with park seed, you're going to have different varieties that you're going to find just if you go to... Like, again, I'm not going to name stores, but you walk into one of the stores we all go to for everything else, and you're going to have the same varieties of broccoli, and you're not going to have asper broccoli. You can't see you. That's why you need park seed. You got asper broccoli. It's all about broccoli. <laughs> but, yeah, there's a whole bunch of varieties and really unique things that you can grow, and I love it. I get really excited because there's always so many new seeds that they, or, that they add each year. I mean, yeah, I love it. Um, I could not remember off the top of my head the average germination for broccoli. So let me go into the app here. And we have a section for that right here. Four to ten right here for broccoli. I knew, I thought it was like seven. So I guess if it's a little, the, the conditions, yeah, I averaged it. <laughs> okay, the purple sprouting broccoli. Uh, we tried them last year. Um, I think we had we, some. We outs didn't start them outside. We we did them as microgreens. Okay, yeah. 
Last year's garden was, we had some issues too. We had some chickens attacked. We had big attacks. We had a lot going on with our garden where we lost some stuff. So again, yeah. another reason why I built, I built a whole new garden over the, uh, the winter and we have a fence and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited. This will be our first time them, like growing them fully. So I'm excited. Yeah. So another, like you love the butterflies. So, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. They understand. Uh, yes, Mike, we do sell seeds in bulk as well. They just added actually this season the option of having a lot of different seeds in bulk. Um, and then also there is a wholesale uh, department. So reach out, email me at info at seedspoon.net and um, I can get you a wholesale department. Because, and I think there is like a wholesale. But I know we do it. And we, we sell seeds and deal with a lot of like uh, nurseries around the country and school programs and things like that. So, um, but yeah, there's an option to, to buy packets. Okay, so we talked about broccoli. Let's throw a surprise in there for our next oh, one. What do you okay, think? surprise. You know what I'm thinking. I do. I think. Robbie. I knew it. Yeah, I knew you <laughs> don't. See how cool we are? We can read each other's minds <laughs> about vegetables. Sharon. I'm not sharing anymore. Sorry, wrong. <laughs> okay, so kohlrabi. We had never grown kohlrabi before, like two years ago. Yeah, about two years, probably. probably. Yeah. And it has become it's like one of our favorite things to grow. Mm -hmm. So, um, number one, it just looks so cool. <laughs> is this is this thing? It grows as this, just sitting right on top of the soil. Um, it's awesome. And it takes about like 40, was it 45 days? It was Something like that, yeah. days on this. You get it very quick. The other one's even faster. I think the other one's like 40 days. And again, like this really ups your stir fry game. And what it does, so like with broccoli, the downside of us growing like the aspen broccoli and stuff like that is we grow a bunch of the green and the dark material like the stir fry, but we were lacking some of the crunch that you get with like the stems of broccoli. Um, but growing broccoli, like the full size broccoli in Oklahoma is a pain if you got to survive the random freezes in April pests. and the pests and the hell storms. Hell storms. <laughs> and sometimes the tornadoes that come with the hell storms. There's a lot going on here. So um, kohlrabi gives us the opportunity to get that texture for stir fry, but in the form of something that we get in 50 days. And it basically just grows this softball looking thing right there on the soil. You harvest that. Dice it all up and stir fry it, and it's amazing. And you can eat literally the entire plant. So there's like zero waste. You can eat the in the, that ball right there. You can yeah. eat the leaves. It's it's all super healthy, very nutritious, and tasteful. It's very easy to grow too. We had a lot of success. This is one of the things we've had the most success with the yes. past couple of years. Yeah. So there's a couple different varieties. It's like fresh closer is the one we have had the most successful. Yeah. Is this a new one? We haven't tried this one yet. Look at that one. I know. That's that was cool. It looks like a pineapple. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. That's a bulk one. Oh, yep, yeah. That's why okay, we're that's why we haven't seen it. Yeah, because they just added all of those bulk ones onto there. So. Nice. Um, so much of the things we talked about with broccoli are going to apply to kohlrabi because they are in the same family. So they're going to have the same pests, um, pretty much the same growing and again, all this information is in the app. Um, yeah, you don't have to start it quite as early as broccoli. Yeah. I will say the great thing about kohlrabi that we do with kohlrabi, we do a lot of succession planting. So what I mean by that, like we're going to start some here really soon at doors, and then we'll continue to start them like throughout the springtime every like week or two. So that way we'll continually always have one to harvest. So it, it works out really great. So that's one of the great things about kohlrabi because they grow so fast. You can do succession planting and all like that. Um, I see a question. I keep seeing the questions over on the other screen, but I can't pull them up from here. So one second, let me oh, go back here. to it. Oh, do you it. want me to pull up something? Uh, yeah, pull up Erica's question, or Cindy's about calibrating. Oh, okay. So it looks like it is a head broccoli, but it's uh, grown as a microgreen a lot. Um, but it looks like it is a head broccoli. I, I knew we'd grown it, but I could not remember yeah. yeah, we have a bunch of those. We're going to grow them as microgreens as well as starting them. That's really the whole time thing, too. So we're going to try both ways. we got to find this purple variety. Ooh, yes. 
Yeah. One of the most awesome things about our relationship with Park Seed has been that they've they've asked us for input on varieties to carry, and they've added a lot more varieties and mm -hmm. a lot more purple. So, yes. <laughs> I get tired of the purple varieties. I love purple ones. It's yeah. my fault because every single time I see a purple or a rainbow variety or something like that, I'm like, ooh, you know, finalist? Yeah. Um, okay. So let's move on to uh, another plant. Uh, what do we want to talk about next? So we've talked about two of the another. same family. Okay. Bok yeah. choy. Bok choy. It's very similar again. But while we're talking about all this, Michelle had a very good suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> what was her suggestion? She said, well, oh, she's, yeah. she likes bok choy for the same reason. Yeah, exactly. Bok choy works perfect for a stir fry, and it makes a fast addition, too, because it's a super fast grower. I think we have some of it. You can harvest within, like, 30 days, too. Yeah, so especially, like, this one, this is a 50-day maturity on this one. Um, you can grow, you can harvest them a little earlier, though, if you want to have some baby greens. I know we do have very fast. I think wait, 40 right here. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, so again, super like it's, fast. it's all about stir fry for us. That's a <laughs> lot of our meals are stir fry. Um, and these are like so. Let me let's go to. Uh, well, I guess we had talked about growing it a little bit. It's very simple to grow. It's one of those things we are going to start indoors grow because it can be a little pesky to germinate. Yeah, that's true. But once it gets going, it really dries. Yes. Um, pests are going to be the same as broccoli. It's going to be little cat. I mean, most of the pests in the, in the spring are going to be little green caterpillars. Uh, the the other pests typically come out more like later in the spring or in the summer. Like you're dealing with them more. But in the early spring, it's going to be little white caterpillars more. It's going to be your main for most everything. Um, along the same lines of bok choy. So I was hoping they had a large one that we could talk about. Um, cabbage. Yeah, let's talk about cabbage. Because one of the ways we love to grow cabbage is uh, we love this Amico hybrid right here. Because we like to grow um, our own lettuce wraps or cabbage wraps, basically. Um, it's great as a tortilla replacement, especially once it starts getting hotter. And I just, there's something really nice about a cool, crisp, like lettuce with some ground beef. It's just something really nice about that. I've always loved it. Um, and we love using this for that. So this is a great variety of, of another another type of leafy grain that you can grow that is going to be larger and that has more purpose than just being stir fry. Um, there's some other varieties too. Let me pull all the Chinese cabbage. You're never going to type right if you're sharing. <laughs> Because that's the main one that we have. Um, yeah, we just go there's a cabbage. bunch of cabbage. Yeah. As far as cabbage itself, we don't typically grow a lot of the head cabbage that people uh, are used to. We grow to. like one or two yeah. of the big ones. And like we have like, um, we grew a giant one with our kids once because there was a cool thing they were doing. Um, and the problem with growing head cabbage again in Oklahoma is it's very difficult to keep them alive with the random weather changes and the hailstorm and all the things that come with that. So if you live in a more temperate climate, you know, if you're somewhere that has a long, cool summer, like go for it. Like grow a lot of cabbage. Is that what like you said? I, grow for I, it. I think I did say grow for it. I love it. That's what you're saying. I love it. Grow for it. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, but again, if you're, if you're somewhere like we are that has a difficult summer that comes pretty quick, then like go for more of these lettuce type. You know, there, the, there's smaller varieties that grow faster. So yeah. just look for a faster harvest. There is a smaller variety of cabbage. I think it was this Caterina. Yeah, this one's 45 days to maturity and it's a smaller head of cabbage. We will do some of these uh, because we can grow them before the weather gets too bad. And we can stagger the, the paintings a little bit. I love cold spot, and you can't really get the right way unless you have one of these. So, and then of course we're gonna grow the red one. We'll grow the red one too. <laughs> um, we'll try some fermented stuff. There's a lot of great stuff you can do. One thing I thought of that we should show them on the app actually is how to sort those seeds by harvest okay. because that's something that I do quite a bit. Because if I'm looking for something to like squeeze in before it gets too hot, 
I'll pull up the varieties list and I'll just I'll filter them to what's the shortest. Okay, so let me show you how I got here. So I'm in broccoli, and if I click on varieties, there's a button right here that is view all varieties. If I tap on that, I can come in here. Now there's this filter right here, and I can change it to filter by different types, sort by days to harvest. If I sort by days to harvest, it's going to give me that's cheating. It's a it's a microgreen, so it's days to mature five. <laughs> <laughs> um, but out of the other ones, you see this is our 50 or 57. Or 50. So you can sort it by that in the app as well and go through and find the, the varieties that you want to grow from there. Um, I saw some questions about Brussels sprouts. So yeah. let's go. You know, I'm going to spell everything wrong because I'm sharing my screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Brussels sprouts are difficult for us to grow. Michelle, you're not alone. <laughs> um, even cats can look at that 110 days of maturity so again that's why we are starting our seeds indoors today and then we will transplant them out when the weather is right for it but they are very difficult to grow um, and it's just one of those things that depends like if you live in I don't know I'll pick a random place Denver, it's really great. Here. I bet you can grow. It gets hotter in the summer, though. Too, it does. So. Yeah. I don't know. Wherever y'all have the great summers, <laughs> um, where it doesn't get here in 10 degrees like it does here, um, you're going to have more success with Brussels sprouts. But you know, that is just one of those things that's going to be, it's kind of like celery, too. Celery is one of those things that we've never even tried to grow because there's no limited caps across here. It gets way too hot. We've you know, grown Brussels sprouts before. We've seen like a couple, but it always, you know, we usually yeah. get a and then it gets like too hot or cold. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, I want to mention if you uh, if you thank you for everyone that's left comments and questions. Um, we're going to be picking two different winners today yes. from whoever uh, comments. So um, be sure to leave your comment, and uh, one winner will receive a premium subscription to the Seed to Spoon app for one year. That gives you unlimited plants, unlimited chapters robot to give you access to all of the calendar and advanced planning features and everything like that and then also we have there's a, a Kirk has a cool seed collection of seeds which is a collection of five or six different seeds that they have together that are ones that do really good in the cool season so a lot of the same ones that we're talking about today so that's going to be a winner as well nice yep five of them right here which I do want to like mention too, they do have a lot of different collections that are great. So if you aren't sure where to start, like I love, I haven't talked about lettuce as a little uh, into what we're going to say when we get to lettuce, but they do have like some of these lettuce. And stuff on the so we'll get to that. In a little bit. Um, so I think we, we, Brussels sprouts again are going to have the same, if you do have the ideal place to grow Brussels sprouts, then like Idaho, yeah. If you live in Idaho, <laughs> um, you're going to have the same type of that you're going to have with broccoli and the other uh, brassicas. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. We talk like root crops. Switch it up. We haven't yep. talked about, at all about those. Let's talk about root crops. So, let's go to carrots first. And you're going to hear her say the same thing about every root crop. Every <laughs> Say that. I love the variety. <laughs> it's the best one. It makes it fun when you're harvesting, is why she likes it because you yes. don't know which which one you're gonna get. The kids get excited like about it. Hunt, yeah, basically. every single time, like, every single time we harvest, uh, either the rainbow carrots or the rainbow radish, they pull them out and they're like, "Oh, it's a purple! Oh, it's a yellow!" Yeah, they'll just start yelling and the colors. They get excited. Um, there are some uh, also some pretty great varieties that I've over the years, like the, the Dan Root 26, like the Half Long Lizard. Uh, they're pretty popular. The ones we've had good success with. Dragon, actually, we grew that. The dragon ones? Yeah. Where the dragon ones? Dragon, the purple yeah. dragon? Oh, the nice. dragon. Nice. Um, let's talk about, so, 
the thing about carrots is you're not going to start them indoors um, because carrots do not transfer well. So what you're going to do is whenever the app does the, the uh, you uh, that's when you start your carrot seeds. And you're going to have to keep them moist for a while because it takes a while for carrots to germinate. It can be up to like 21 days. The carrots germinate every time the seeds need to stay moist. So if you just plant them directly on the soil and try to keep up with watering, that can be difficult. Oftentimes, it is at least. So, one thing that we found to do is take burlap. See, we got burlap. Um, one of these burlap sacks and put it over seed after you um, after you put them in the ground. And what that does is help keep seed moist, and it really ups your your odds when it comes to carrot germination. Yeah, so we just water that burlap in whenever we plant and then just keep it there until they sprout and then we remove it. Yeah. So, but it has a long germination. There is another kind of half when it comes to carrots, and we sell this product called carrot seed tape. I think that's just carrot tape. Right so, this makes it easier to move because carrot seeds are really small and if it's windy or whatever. So, this basically makes it where it's carrot seeds that are spaced out on this. Real thin yeah. paper, already spaced out where you need to be, and then you just unroll that paper on the soil yeah, and just, cover it. Yep, yeah. I mean it, it's really just like toilet paper. I mean, really, it, that's very very thin toilet paper. I also recommend growing your carrots next to where you're going to have your tomatoes. There's a very popular book called Carrot Grow Tomatoes. Um, it's one of the things we learned a lot from. And um, I love that because that's very true. Uh, carrots and tomatoes are going to help each other when it starts to get too hot in the summer. The tomatoes are going to shade the carrots a little bit, put them out. Um, so those are the biggest things with carrots. Um, also make sure that your soil is very loose and uh, aerated. Like we make our own soil mix called Mel's Mix that is, is going to be, it's really solid. It's your own potting mix. Like clay oil or something like that, you're going to have some hard times uh, with carrots as well. Let's see if we have any questions about carrots. Let's see, we yeah. have a few. Let's see. Um, a lot of people just not having luck with carrots. So hopefully, some of the helpful yeah. tips we've had. Do you have any ideas about what's going on here? And don't feel alone because oh, yeah. it's very common. And a lot of times, it's just kind of. Depends on the season, so that's why carrots are another one of those things where I recommend doing succession planting. Like, yes. don't bet it all on one planting of carrots, like face them out. And that's better too because you don't want to harvest all the carrots at once, too, unless it's in the fall and they're going to be stored over the winter. But if it's in the spring, we really try and space out the carrot planting. Maybe every couple of weeks, we'll have another round of carrots going. So we have staggered harvest and we have better luck at success because it can be very temperamental and. Again, depending on where you live, like we can get, we can get a stretch of temperatures in the nineties in April, in Oklahoma, you know, or early May. Like Never know. Yeah. So. So here, so Robin says she has does hasn't had much luck with carrots. They always look more like roots. Am I missing a nutrient? That happens a lot in the winter for us, where the carrots start to grow a lot of roots. I feel like if we keep them in the ground for too long, then that happens. Um, but generally, if you harvest them whenever it's time for them to be harvested, you won't have that issue. You know who this is a question for? Robot. I think so. <laughs> Growbot to the rescue. Okay, so Growbot is an AI chat built that is chat chatbot that is built into an app. Um, thank you for for your concern, Growbot. Um, <laughs> So overcrowding and compacted soil. That's kind of what I was thinking. That makes sense. Um, so this is a great opportunity to give a shout out to Growbot. If you haven't been introduced to Growbot yet, it's an AI chat app that uh, lets you ask whatever you want about gardening. It's been super helpful for us. We use it all the time. We use it as a thinking partner. Um, talk to a long time about AI. I'll <laughs> leave it at that. And uh, thanks for your help, Growbot. So Michelle wants to know how often we water over the burlap. 
Um, I mean, honestly, I think that just really depends on a lot of factors, like how windy it is and how much sun we're getting and yeah. how dried out it is. So I'll just check it. And if it needs water, I'll water it. The burlap does a great job. Yeah. So it's typically not like once every three or four days tops. I mean, depending on, again. Great question. So how do carrots grow in pots? So we've actually grown a lot of carrots in smart pots and they've done really, really well. So smart pots are these fabric raised beds that do amazing. And they have a whole bunch of different sizes of them. We let's see what size would we use for carrots. I mean, we can really use any size. The um taller ones are gonna work best. You have yeah. more root growth. I think like a big back bed we've had good success with. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, we've grown them in all all yeah, different sizes. Like one of these two gallons is gonna do well because it has a really there's a lot of area for the root to develop. Yeah, so as long as it's deep enough, you can absolutely grow them in containers. If you're not familiar with smart pots, they're actually made here in Oklahoma where we are too. And we've used them for a long time. Um, we've had a lot of success with them. They're very durable and they're going to last a very long time. And it's a lot easier than having a built brain pass. So you just want to get started with growing food. These smart pots are a great option. They have purple ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, Here's a, they have like these raised bed ones. This is the big bag bed. I guess it, sorry, they changed the name of them a few years ago. Uh, so yeah. The round raised bed, 100 gallon. Uh, these are great too. Uh, we've had a lot of success growing, well, pretty much everything. But yeah. I, I would not recommend trying to grow carrots with a standard plastic pot though. Um, I think you're going to have a lot of issues there. With Drying out fast or water staying logged in the bottom. Yeah. We pretty much only grow like ornamental flowers and those at this point. Just mums. Lots of mums. Those. That's all we're, really <laughs> we're trying to grow fruit. It's going to be in something like this. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of what we talked about applies to a lot of the different root crops. Yeah. A lot of the tips we gave. Now, I do want to give a shout out to beets because we also grow beets for their greens as well. So obviously uh, we grow them for the bee part, but um, like bull's blood here, for example, is a great one that you can grow for the greens. And I love throwing them in like a little wrap or salad or something like that. You don't want it to be like the whole thing. I just like a couple of leaves mixed in, just adds a little bit of extra flavor and makes stuff a little more dynamic. Um, Beets can be difficult to grow if you don't have good soil too. So that's another one of those things you're going to want to make sure you have a really good high quality soil mix, like a soil or something like that. And you're going to have plenty of space for them. But other than that, they're pretty easy to grow once they get going. You're just again, once you thin them down correctly, that's really the thing. And again, they have the rainbow mixes too, which are fun. <laughs> I, told, I told them what you were going to say about every single one of them. Okay. Um, peas? Peas, yes. Okay, so peas are great. Something you, completely different than what we talked about. Yeah, <laughs> peas are going to be one of the best things for you to grow in your garden for a number of reasons. Number one, you have a lot of great food off of it. It's awesome. If you haven't had a fresh pea out of the garden, miss it out. It tastes so good. Uh, and it loses its flavor pretty quick after your, after your harvest. So it's not one of those things you can replicate from a grocery store, even from a farmer's market, because even by the time he gets there, it's not going to taste like it does right after your garden. So that's the number one reason. Out of everything that we grow in our garden, it probably has the most bang for its buck when it comes to flavor that you miss out on. Um, and plus, whenever you're growing, like if you have one pea plant, you get a huge harvest from just one plant. Yeah, there are no rainbow peas. It's <laughs> really Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Bummer, right? They need to make rainbow peas. That's what. Um, I love so, it. So the great thing about peas too is they're also going to help your garden. So peas are one of these cool plants that are able to take nitrogen out of the air and store it down in in the soil um, in these little nodules on the roots. And what that does is it makes it to where the other plants around that are able to use that nitrogen. So if you have peas like right next to your tomatoes or something like that, then um, it's going to help them out. So that's another great thing about peas. Now, I will say with peas, 
most of the time with most of these varieties, you're going to need quite a bit of space because they do grow a lot and they will need some sort of support to grow up. So we do a lot of trellising for our peas. Um, our favorite trellis that we do is a cattle panel arch where we just get a cattle panel and then we arch it over on itself. Um, so yeah, we just grow it up that, or we can have it sitting up straight and just binding it along those, along those routes. We have lots of different trellises that we use. These for the most part are going to need, oh, yep, that was a building one. Good one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I tried my best, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> But yes, so we, most of the time you're going to need a trellis for peas, but there are actually, um, which one is the one? There is one I know that we just added recently that's a, like a really good patio variety. Um, it's a lot smaller. So I mean, there there are smaller varieties of peas that you can grow in a more compact space. I think it's in the, the, pots. the sugar. It says it's a it's and then, oh, this oh, there's a snow, snow pea that I love too. I don't see it. No. Wow. Well, I think that I think that was actually it. under snow pea. Like when I searched, I think it was a separate deal. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. There's a dwarf one. Yeah. Dwarf snow one. I love that one. That one is super tasty, also. But yeah, and all of course, like the sugar snap peas, incredible. Every pea wrong. tastes good. You can't go yeah. wrong with peas. Yeah, and we grow a ton of them. We grow them along every trellis we have and fences and everywhere we can. Um, and then we'll switch to beans once it gets too hot. For you. So that's a topic for another workshop. <laughs> <laughs> but we have either beans or peas growing year round. And definitely every spring garden needs to have some peas. For sure. Well, we haven't talked about greens, so, so let's touch on greens real quick before we go okay. and well, chat about other spinach, things real quick. Okay, so spinach is our favorite green to grow. Um, it's really the thing that got us uh, in the beginning when we first started growing. I think spinach was the first plant that we had a ton of success with that really helped us for a number of reasons. One, spinach was expensive in the store. We were eating a lot of it. Um, we were on a health kick, you know, trying to get a lot of magnesium in our diet, things like that. And spinach has a ton of magnesium and calcium and a lot of really good stuff in it. And, um, you know, we had a lot of success with it because it's pretty easy to grow. Now, it can be finicky on germinating. You're going to want to do multiple rounds on it, like I mentioned on the other things. But the cool thing about spinach is it's not like so before I grew spinach, my relationship with spinach was that I sometimes got it on my Subway sandwich because I wanted to feel healthy. I never really tasted anything from it. And I never really like thought much of it. It was like this real like thin leaf. It just didn't, no flavor. Yeah, really no yeah. flavor. It didn't do much. Uh, the first time I had spinach out of the garden, it was like, where has this spinach been my whole life? It like, was crunchy almost. and had like, like an almond flavor. And it was just kind of like the texture of it and everything. It was just like... Wow, and some of it was like sweet, especially once it's cold, or when you grow it when it's cold, it just heats up. And it was just kind of this light bulb moment of I've been missing out, and we started collecting spinach. That was when our spinach OCD collection began. How many do we have on our page for spinach uh, here? Probably our... just as many as we do broccoli. We have every spinach that is in the app. It's uh, yeah, yep. only one page. Yeah. But yeah, so there's our, our spinach. Um, our the, the easiest to grow is going to be like bloom cell long standing. That's going to be like the most popular variety. You'll find that. I like the space. Space, space was a really good yeah. one. It was a hybrid. Um, really well. You know, but like when it comes to spinach, like I like to grow all the varieties because they all have their purpose. Like the small leaves are great in salads and wraps and stuff like that. But the bigger leaves are great as, again, like a tortilla replacement um, or just like have a spinach leaf with some chicken and some cheese in there and like a little cilantro or something that tastes incredible. Um, it's also something that we add into all of our pastas and things like that. And we teach our kids to eat a lot of this stuff in the garden because they have no idea it's even in there. Uh, we will burn it through our food processor. I even put it in mac and cheese 
too. And I mean, yeah. it's super easy to hide in a lot of foods <laughs> where uh, if you have eaters. Spinach isn't going to have a whole lot of pests from that aspect. The main thing you're going to have are going to be aphids. Um, that's the biggest thing we have. You just spray them right off. They're really simple. We don't ever spray anything on, on spinach. Um, it's one of our favorite things to grow. I definitely recommend growing it. Even if you don't, like, if you felt like I did about spinach before, like give it a shot and you can see the difference. And it's, you know, it's one of our favorite things. Well, and I, I will say super quick, shout out to Swiss chard because <laughs> I did not know that I like Swiss chard at all. Like I had never even tasted it until we grew it. And we only grew it again because there was a really pretty variety that I love. Um, the bright lights, yes, I know, another rainbowy one. But honestly, it tastes incredible, and it is super fun to do. As we've been talking about a lot of these with tortilla replacements, the kids actually love these because they're super bright and really fun looking. Like I, our daughter loves using these really pretty pink ones as wraps, and it, it works amazing to help get kids eating and excited about gardening. And if you're like me, it gets me excited too. So <laughs> let's let's knock out the rest of the greens and then we will announce our winner. We'll announce our winner here in just a few minutes and then we can take the question after that. So the other uh thing we need to cover kettle. I don't know how we made it this far about talking about kettle. It's like <laughs> all of these things we talked about we love. Like kettle is probably towards the top we of the list. Yeah. We grow a ton of it. And I know everyone jokes about kettle not tasting good, but I promise you can grow it it's not hot outside. It's going to taste great. Now, if you grow a in June, it's not tasting good. Because as it gets hotter, it gets more bitter. And I do not like eating kale out of the garden. In but I love it in the spring or in winter. Winter kale is my favorite. It's the best. Yes, we actually uh, put it in the in our fall gardens a lot for, over the winter. Yeah. So kale is going to have the same pest issues as like with uh, the caterpillars and stuff like that. Our favorite variety of kale is this Cinto kale, known as dinosaur kale. It tastes incredible. Um, if kids do, they might like that it's called dinosaur. It has like this really cool texture, kind of like dinosaur skin, I guess is really the name. <laughs> um, there's also some great mixes that they have of kale. So this baby leaf mix, there's a couple other mixes. That they there's have. a lot of different mixes that they have. Different like, lettuce, and spinaches, like so many different collections. So you get to try like a variety of things. But that's, those are my favorites because I just get to grow a bunch of different types and then different colors and different tastes and all of that with my salads. The cool thing about kale too is like, this is more for the fall, but it will overwinter. So if you grow it in the fall, it'll survive all winter and then come back in the spring. And then you have some of your first harvest from that. And it still has some of that. It's, you know, it's going to die earlier than once it gets hot. So you still have to have your own. Too. Um, and then we'll wrap it up on the greens with lettuce because obviously. We don't have lettuce. <laughs> um, again, there's a lot of different mixes that they have that I recommend. Like the salad bowl. Really There's like a master chef one too that is actually really good. Yeah. It works so well for us. And there, yeah, and like there's a mini romaine that has like red and cream in it. Love it. Yeah, yeah. We, we do like we'll do a lot of romaine ones and then we'll do the mixes. The way that we plant it is we just spring, we'll have a designated area that's just going to be like a lettuce bed or a salad bowl bed basically. We sprinkle all, all those seeds on. And then the cool thing about lettuce is once you cut your first harvest, then it will regrow again, and you can usually get two or three harvests off of that lettuce before it before it needs to be hot. If you're somewhere that's more temperate, if you're in Idaho, then you're going to be <laughs> able to grow it um, all summer. But here it struggles. Now there are there is a variety that does well in the heat. Summer glory, is that it? I think there was summer like a glory. summer glory one. Oh, cool. It's, oh, it's a blend of seven heat tolerant. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Definitely recommend this if you live somewhere that it gets hot. Because that's one of the things we miss the most in the summer is having greens. Oh, we have a question from Mike. Cool. Mike, oh, I answered yeah. your question. Without even knowing <laughs> um, it. Yeah. So that's one of the great things about, uh, I guess let's talk about some greens that do well in the summer. 
too, because it sucks in the summer once you lose greens and start them. Um, collard greens are one of the greens that tend to do uh, better in the summer. Um, this top chop collard green. And then also um, Malabar spinach. It's not actual spinach, it's uh, fake spinach. It's not in the spinach family, but it tastes like spinach and it does well in the summer. So this is another good option. We're talking cool season though. So I just wanted to, you know. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's announce our, our winner here and then we can answer more questions. I feel like we still have more stuff to, we could have I know, about. my we goodness. Didn't... And I didn't get to talk about tips to, uh, to plants one. All right. Well, check out our, our YouTube channel because that's all she's been talking about for the past week is out there in the cold making videos about our greenhouses. Yeah. So that's really the key is having some sort of greenhouse or protection. Well, and also over. here, did you put that uh, image up? I did not. Oh. Yeah. I know. The air dropped it to me right before and I was yeah. supposed to upload it. I well, I was going to say, like, even if you don't have hoop houses built, like you can still have ways to... Um, to protect your plants like we just get these five gallon water buckets cut off the bottom and put that over plants and it'll help make that plant you know it's not a big location but if you have a smaller area it'll help that plant through extreme temperatures or hail storms or things like that well, again just check out our youtube channel because she's out there every day making videos about this i'm sure her next video will be five ways to protect your plants <laughs> like there we go <laughs> um okay so our winner. Um, okay. Thank you, Andrew. He already drew our winners. And we're running short on time. Okay. okay. So our first winner for the Steve to Spoon Premium uh, membership is Michelle C. Congratulations, Michelle. Woo. Email us at uh, info at Let me put it up here so you can see. Okay. So there's the email address. Where so that's to, the know, winner from last last week. Michelle C. Oh, it's, it's different up here. Oh, really? That's so weird. Huh. I changed it, and then it. Uh, Maybe it just took a second to change. There we go. There it goes. I'm not sure. So what many it, bugs. This. I know. I don't know. It's wow. Because it's so cold out. I'm glad I'm not coding out here. <laughs> the app would not work as well. Congratulations, Michelle. It's all a joke. Send us an email. Okay. And then we also have the cool season collection of seeds that we're giving away too. And that winner is Mike Tinbell. Woo, congratulations, Mike. Congratulations, Mike. Again, email us and we will get your contact information and send it up. Somehow we hit right at one o'clock, but let's make sure we answered uh, any questions that came in. So we'll stick around for a little bit and answer some more questions. If we if you've had questions that you put in there that I we haven't answered, uh, throw them back in again. I might help us you know I'm going through it now to see. Uh, here's a question about the app. If you can access a browser from the Amazon tablet, then yes. Uh, we are not specifically in the Amazon store, but uh, if you go to app .net. Um, Andrew, if you could put a link in chat for me um, to the app.seedtospoon.net, then um, if, you, if you can get to there from a browser, then you can use the app. So that'll work anywhere that, that you can use a browser. Um, the rainbow beads, they taste it. They all taste Honestly, like it me. all tastes the same, but <laughs> it it's just prettier. <laughs> but I don't think it tastes any like different. For our greens, you're going to have the most success if you do like some sort of drip irrigation. Um, last year we didn't. We didn't get to get all that stuff set up, so we hand watered and did it in the morning. That way, there was plenty of time for it to dry out. But you don't want to have like wet, soggy leaves overnight. That's what means it will lead to issues. Drip irrigation will do best. That's definitely the way to go. Um, Oh, I didn't mean to click on that. What you know, I was not prepared to answer about okra. Um, I don't know about variety. a variety that doesn't grow huge. I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll have to research that. We'll we'll chat more about warm season. Yeah. I mean, soon. Yeah, we do these every single week. By the way, next week we're going to be talking about tomatoes. Tomatoes. Yep, all things tomatoes, different varieties, different types, like how to like 
determinate versus indeterminate and all of that. What our favorites are, what we've done wrong with tomatoes. That's a, we yeah. made a whole video Tips that was like 15 minutes long about what we did wrong with tomatoes. There's a lot to talk about there. We've had our journey with tomatoes over the years, so we will we'll dig into it. All right. Well, I think we got the questions. I didn't see any more pop up. So yeah, thank if you, you have any more, just feel free to leave them in here, and I will uh, hopefully get time to come back in here and uh, respond back. Or if not, we're well, we appreciate y'all. Thanks for joining. Um, this is so much fun. We love your comments. Um, I love the rainbow pea comment. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. I think we should start having another contest. It's just the funniest comment. It's a I love it. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Well, have a good week, everyone. I hope it warms up for you. It's starting to warm up here. It's going to be in the 40s Wednesday. So Finally. I'm about to get freezing. outside and do things again. So, all right. Have a good week.